I think for the past um, almost half a century, we have been in the narrative mode in, in preaching in one way or another. And um, I think the narrative mode in preaching addressed this need. The need is, I have heard the gospel, uh, I know the biblical message, but I am not existentially engaged uh, with it. Uh, and therefore, I need to move from uh, knowledge to delight. And um, I, th I think that's beginning to take on water. And the reason that that's beginning to take on water is because uh, of two reasons. One is there is now, n uh, in many congregations, not enough uh, information out there to create delight. So it, delight sermons or narrative sermons become mere stimulation. Uh, but they aren't evoking knowledge that is already in place. And so people n don't know, and they know they don't know. Uh, and so they hear stories in sermons as kind of, well, that was a nice story. That was a good story. The other thing is, <clears throat> stories require a certain kind of narrative competence. Um, they require a culture um, that thinks of itself uh, with a past, a present, and a, and a future. So that the question becomes, which story? And okay, here's the, here's the best story. Um, but Galen Strawson has written this really interesting essay, he's a philosopher at Oxford, called Against Narrativity. And uh, he says, I know moral philosophers and ethicists and theologians all argue that human beings are narrative-shaped creatures, and what it means to be ethical is to have the good story, the right story. He said, I reject both of those claims. He said, I, I, I think that there are certain people who live that way. Uh, he calls them diachronics. But I am not one of them, he said, and there are plenty of people like me. I am an episodic. I don't have a past. I don't have a future. He said, now look, I, I know that when I was a little boy I fell out of a boat. I mean, I know I have a literal past. But I don't understand myself in continuity with a past, present, future story so that what happened to me in the quote-unquote past is no more pertinent than Thursday's piano practice is to a concert pianist. It's all there in the present. So I am a, I am a series of um, unrepeatable presents. Well, I disagree with Strassen, but I think he's got his finger on a kind of cultural ADD that's out there a kind of uh, episodic uh, quality to things. So we come along naively with narrative preaching and what happens in, to the listener is the listener maybe appreciates the story in a Reader's Digest sense but then picks out a piece of it, an episode of it, and treats it like a park bench and sits on it for a while and uh, reflects. So that what's happening, and we are, our megachurches are really leading the way here, and they are not only just big, they're also examples to a lot of preachers. They're doing bullet points. They are saying, they think episodically, I'll preach episodically. And here is an insight, here is a piece of wisdom. So we're moving from the narrative genre to the wisdom genre. Now I'm, I'm um, uh, both appreciative of that. I mean, I think we do have a didactic task ahead of us, and this is kind of responding to that. But what makes me nervous is I think this form of preaching essentially reinforces the episodic quality of life. So here we're caught. We want to say the Christian faith is narratively shaped into a culture that has no narrative competence. So do we continue to preach narrative or do we start preaching bullet points, PowerPoint? And I think what we do is we preach narrative. We preach the gospel narratives. But we also step aside and do some, maybe not bullet pointing, but some um, instructions on how to process the narrative. Uh, ways to get into the narrative, ways to appreciate the narrative. So we become teacher and storyteller at the same time in a kind of rhythm. Um, I think the Gospel of Matthew may be a little bit that way. <laughs> that kind of rhythm between Halakha and Haggadah, between um, Here's some didactic instruction on how you should live, and here are the stories that embody that. Mm -hmm. And that rhythm between the two becomes a form of communication to build uh, a community of faith that doesn't have one.